be compared to yours, oh God. No love that can be compared to yours. We just want to say, Lord, we love you this morning. Indeed, forever and ever, we will love you. Forever and ever, we will praise you. Thank you, our good God. This morning, we've come again. We've come, oh God, to learn at your feet. We have come that you will release the word of life to us. The Lord Jesus, in John 6, asked the disciples, he said, will you also go away, seeing that many people left him after he preached? And they said to him, to who else will we go? You alone have the word of life. Lord, we thank you because we have come again to the word of life. We have come to that word that gives life to us, the word that makes us alive, the word that, that, that overcomes death, that overcomes stagnancy, that overcomes failures, that overcomes everything that wants to hold us down and hold us back. That word that pushes us ahead, that helps us to forge ahead. Lord, we thank you for your word of life, the word of breakthrough, the word of victory, the word of healing, the word of comfort, of love that you are bringing to us again this morning. Lord, we pray that our hearts be open to hear you and to receive all that you have for us this morning, for we've asked in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen, amen. We're going to read from, we'll read Matthew 10 again, 16b. We'll read Matthew 10 and we're going to jump to Ephesians 5 because we're going to spend the bulk of our time in Ephesians 5. I want us to read Matthew 10, 16 again. Let's just read the whole of 16 and then... Um, Media team, please, you will help us because we're going to flip to Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. All right, let's go. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Hallelujah. Please make yourself welcome. Have your seats. I believe you've had a beautiful week thus far. Oh, no. Yeah, last week, we are in a new week already. This October is running. You know, that it's general, generally believed that when you are enjoying something, it actually looks like time is flying. As in, when did we enter October? Today is already what? 15. Tomorrow we'll have done more than half of October. Amen. And we just bless the Lord for his goodness to us. This morning, I want to just delve into this Ephesians 5. Um, we're still, you know, taking a detour, looking at Matthew 10, that, the, uh, that conversation that the Lord Jesus had with his disciples, turned apostles. And in verse 16 of 10, he told them, in 10b, he said, therefore be wise. Therefore be wise. So this morning, I'm looking at getting wisdom. Amen getting wisdom we want to just take a look at and there are several ways you know that you can get wisdom the whole book of uh, proverbs is dedicated to what wisdom if you start at the beginning it will tell you the reason why i've written this book is this 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 you know you want to have wisdom stay here fellowship with me it says the proverbs of solomon proverbs one the son of david the king of israel to know wisdom and instruction it says to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity, to give prudence to the simple. To simple is another word for the fool. Someone that is simple, that is not, is not wise. It says to give wisdom to that person, to give prudence, yes, and his wisdom. To the young man, to give to the young man knowledge and discretion. And it says in verse 5, it says a wise man will hear and increase Learning and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. So, if you go through the whole of Proverbs, you have from 1 chapters 1 to 31, you will find wisdom for life. So, you can just dwell in here. You know, if you sit in this uh, book, you're going to learn a whole lot from time to time. Go through, you know, the book of Proverbs and just fellowship with it. Amen. It will just do your, your life a whole world of good. But we're going to go on to Ephesians to look at, um, to look at, 
uh, to look at wisdom, how to get wisdom. You have several ways of getting wisdom, wisdom, but I believe the Lord took my heart to, you know, to this Ephesians, and I just want us to dwell there. Ephesians 5, we're going to just learn a thing or two. Um, basically, like three things from verse 16 to 18 on how to acquire wisdom, getting wisdom. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, wisdom is that thing that is principal. It is major. It is important. In all the things you get, make sure you get wisdom. Don't go after health. Go after wife, children. If you do not have wisdom, you will be sorry. He said wisdom is the principal thing. In all your getting, in all the things that you get, he said get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Get wisdom. So we want to look at how to get wisdom. Ephesians 1, 17, there's a prayer by Apostle Paul in that, in that chapter that was saying to us that we should pray that the Lord will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of, he, of him. So, and you know, James 1, 5 also has the same thing to say. James 1, 5 says, if you lack wisdom, ask the Lord. The Lord gives it so generously. He does not, he doesn't, he doesn't um, hold back. He gives wisdom if you ask for wisdom. Amen. So that's already one way to ask. I've told you like two ways already, self. Sit in the book of Proverbs. Let your heart be open. The Spirit of God will tell you a lot of things. You know, you just, it's not in the day of war that we prepare for war. You agree with me. It's in the day of peace, in the days where there are no wars. When you don't need that wisdom yet, that is when you take out time to know that wisdom or to cultivate the habit of fellowshipping with the wisdom. And soon enough, we will see that the, the, the destination, the location of all wisdom actually resides in Jesus Christ. Wisdom is not so much a thing as it is a person. Amen. Wisdom is really a person. That is Jesus. The scripture says to us, and we will get into all of that much later. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says to us that in Christ Jesus, we have wisdom. He's been made wisdom unto you and I. So ultimately, this discussion is meant to lead you to the person of Jesus. It's meant to lead you to appreciate the, the Holy Spirit more. Appreciate sitting with him, fellowshipping with him, knowing his voice, knowing his ways. Like we said earlier on, David was able to build a tabernacle that, that delighted God. He got the code. He got the, he got the dimensions. He got everything perfectly because he had, come in, he had become in sync with the Father. He had, become, he had become one with God. So he could interpret what was on the heart of, of, of the Father. The heart of God. The Lord Jesus, when he was here, he said, all the things that I did, I did them because I saw the Father doing them. Whatever I saw, my, I see my Father do, that he was so much in touch with the Father. He was so much one. He became one. You know, that we have, some of us have some friends that you are in a place, as you are talking, you are completing each other's sentences. Especially for married, um, you know, couples. You become so, Yoruba say, when live, Stay so long with soap. It becomes soap. You become one. That is the thing that happens to you when you begin a fellowship with God. You begin a fellowship with the person of the Lord Jesus. You begin a fellowship with his spirit because Jesus is not here anymore. But we know the spirit of God is here. Amen. We have his word. We have access to him. When you begin to spend time with him, you will become wise because he is wisdom. Amen. The scripture says that he that walks with the wise will become why? So ultimately, I've told you the end of my message this morning, is to get you to a place where you appreciate more. The reason why you need or the importance, where you, the importance of sitting with God, knowing the Lord. You know, we become, we be, you became a Christian and the first thing they started to tell you is to grow as a Christian. Read your Bible, pray every day. It hasn't changed. It will never change till we meet the Lord Jesus. It's the same thing. I remember when I, uh, when, did I say when I gave my life to Christ. No, but when I gave my life to no, when I got, no. When I, when I, huh. when, when I got engaged to my husband, you can see the, one, the reason why I'm saying I give my life, as if I gave my life to him. <laughs> he was just doing me tongue twisting, as in it's not that, that's not what I want to say. When I became engaged to him, and we started, you know, the friendship, you know, I just said I wanted to know more. You know, it was as if I wasn't getting, I was like, there should be more to you, I want to know. And he said to me, okay, one way to do this, I'll give you some of the letters that some of my friends have written to me, those days that they used to, used to write letters. It was in the University of Ibadan. 
So he gave me a big pile, a um, 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 plastic folder, a um, plastic yeah, file of letters that several of his friends had written to him during the holiday period, several years over, you know, several years. Gave me a pile, the big pile is still in my father's house. Of course, I didn't read, I'm not sure I even read one tense. Because I just wanted to know him. One way to know someone is to sit with the person. One way to know someone is to hear the person speak. You are engaged to someone. You want to be sure you are not on a one chance um, um, trip. You want to find time to spend with that person. The more you spend time, the more you will get to know how genuine or not, or how not genuine the person is. They say for, for business people, you are going into business with someone, it's important that you take yourselves out. Go to restaurant, eat, see the person's behavior, how he relates to other people that you see. You know, play games. When he loses a game with you, see how he reacts, because that's how he's going to do also when you do business with him and things don't go well. Some people will be like, that I will not take anything out of this business. Nobody will take anything. So they will just cut everything. Have you played Ludo with those people before? <laughs> you play Ludo with them. They can see the way the thing is going. That, ah, oh boy, I'm going to lose. They just cut everything. As they let's start again. It's about I was winning. Eh? There's no proof. We'll start again. So when you want to go into business, they said spend time with the person. Go, and that's why people play, all those big men, go to, they go to the golf course, right? They go and play golf. They see the temperament of the person they want to do business with. The same way, you can't know God by osmosis. It doesn't happen by infrared. Turn on your Bluetooth, God turns his own on. Mm -mm. You have to sit with him. You have, to, you have to talk with him. You have to converse with him. So I've told you that ultimately, the, the location of all wisdom is in Christ Jesus. And we have access to, the, to Christ Jesus through his spirit. Amen. So that's the, that's the, the, you know, the um, end of my message this morning, but we're going to look at, we're going to start from um, verse 15. Verse 15 says, see, this is Ephesians 5, it says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. This statement here, and we're just going to take all the verses, you know, um, it might be 19 to 21 that we'll lump together, but verse 15 says, please, can we have Ephesians 5? 15. It says, see to it that you walk as wise and not as fools. Because there, so that verse already tells us that you can see the walkings of two different groups of people. There is a way that a wise man walks or does his things or, or leads his life. And there is a way that a foolish person leads his life or walks. You know, through the things he does, through the things he says or he does not say or he does not do, you get to know if someone is wise or the person is a fool. And that straight away, you know, makes you understand that you have a choice to make. You have a choice to make whether to be a fool or to be a wise person. Amen. The, if we go down, I think it's verse 18, we're saying, or verse 17. It says, do not be unwise. That is softening it, not calling it full. Don't be unwise. So we have a choice to make. Do I want to live as a wise person? Do I want to live as a foolish person? What, is the, what makes the difference known? When two people sit down? Proverbs, I think, 7, 28 says to us that when a foolish person keeps quiet, you are tempted to actually believe he's a wise person. Proverbs 7, 28, I think. It says if a, if a foolish person keeps quiet, you will think he's a wise person. So what gives him away? It is when he opens his mouth, you realize that there is no wisdom in this soul. So I'm thinking for an individual... Even if I, as at this minute, I can, be, I can be termed as unwise, if I begin to do some things, I can move from being an unwise person, I can move into being a wise person. I can move from being foolish into wisdom. And we will look into, you know, what I will go about that in a jiffy. But he's saying to us here, there are two, two true groups of people. And the Lord Jesus said to us from Matthew 10, 16, he said, be, you be wise. Learn how to be wise. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the application of knowledge. Wisdom already says to us that you must have acquired knowledge over time. As you go through life, you acquire, you acquire, you learn a thing or two. You learn here, you learn there, you learn from different people, you learn from mistakes, you learn from errors. We read books, we do plenty of things. And then opportunity comes for you to display what you have learned, the knowledge that you have gathered over the years. You apply it. That is wisdom. 
So the way we'll know the difference between a wise person and a unwise person is the things that they do or the things that they say. That is how we'll get to know. And I want to also say to you that the things that you do, the things that you say, actually have their foundation in your thoughts. The thoughts, the way that you program things in your mind. Amen. Your predominant, the predominant thoughts, those are the things that will dictate the things you will do and the things that you will say. Just follow me, you know, we've said it now, that you can have two different people. One is a fool, one is a wise person. But we don't know. How will I know? How will people know if I'm wise or I'm not wise? It depends on what I do or what I say. The things that you do or that you say are... Uh, they are offshoots of the thoughts that go on in your mind. So we can just bring it down to, you know, the thoughts that go on in your mind. What kind of thoughts are they? How do you have these thoughts? These thoughts come by reason of things that we have exposed ourselves to over the years and over the days, over different weeks, over different months. What are you exposing yourself to? What are you, what are you, you know, getting into your heart, into your mind? What are you feeding yourself with? Because that is what we tell at the end of the day. So at the beginning of the spectrum here, we will end up with a wise person or a foolish person. But I'm saying that in between like this, you have a lineup of some things. I'm going to go over them now. At the very end here, you have time. Time. In between time and what, how you will find out if this person is wise or foolish are plenty of things. Namely, their actions. They are words, they are thoughts, and all of these things you are going to get based on what they have spent their time doing. Is anybody tracking with me? So we're going to come back to this time. So at the end of the day, if I will be a foolish person or I will be a wise person, we're going to narrow it down to what is my time going into? What am I exposing myself to? What am I using my time to do? And you will soon begin to see that. Now, verse 16 says to us, it says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. This word redeeming here has the idea of purchasing back, buying something, having a transaction. You are, you, are, you are engaging in a transaction. You are buying something. You are purchasing something. Remember that we said at the end of the spectrum, what do we have? Your time. Your time. Verse 16 says here, it says, redeem your time. That is your currency. That is your commodity that you are going to use to purchase things. Redeem means you are buying something. You are purchasing something. We are using our time. Our 20, you know, part of your time today from some of us have been here since 8. You are, going to, you are saying between 8 and 12, I am going to transact with these four hours. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something with, I'm doing something, you know, important to myself with these four hours I'm spending in this place or three hours as your case may be as the case may be, rather. I'm transacting, I'm purchasing, I'm doing something intentionally with my time. He says in verse 16, he says, redeem the time. Be conscious, mark your time. Put a marker on your time. It's, I'm not, you know, and I'm not here this morning to say to you, you know, always read, always read the Bible, pray, all of those things are, they are normal. Sleep, what you do with sleep is important. Sleep, because if you do not rest well, this is the only very cool passport that you have here. May we not find our, our ways out before time in Jesus' name. So even as you spend time to rest, as you spend time to sleep, as you spend time to cook because you want to eat good food, you are transacting with your time. You are using time. Amen. So he says redeem because the days are evil. The days are opposed to God. They are opposed to God's goodness. What is going on around? And that's where we started from. The Lord Jesus said, I'm sending you out as wolves among, as sheep, some sheep among wolves. He said, have wisdom. Go get wisdom. Because this same verse 16 is saying to us here that the days are evil. They are opposed to God. They are opposed to the goodness of God. And that is why it's important for you that you, are, you, you, don't, let it, you know, don't let it ever slip out of your mind. That your time is, your, is a great commodity. 
your time is a great commodity. What you do with it is going to tell at the end of the day if you will be wise. And Jesus has given us a commandment. He said, go ahead, get wisdom. If not, you won't be able to do, you won't be able to accomplish what I've asked you to accomplish here on earth. Verse 17, it says, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So we're starting with, number, you know, just about three things I want to look at here. We've looked at verse 16 already. Mark your time. Mark your time. Because the aggregate of what you do with it at the end of the day will say to you, will show you your results. Are you leading a life where at the end of the day you can be called a wise person or a foolish person? And you need wisdom. Jesus said, go get wisdom. To get wisdom, you need to be... You need to be conscious of your time. You need to recognize that your time is your greatest commodity. What are you, you know, what are you, um, you know, purchasing it with? What are, you know, what are you purchasing with it? What are you using it for? Verse 17 says to us, do not be unwise. Know what the will of the Lord is. For you to obtain wisdom, to get wisdom, number one, we said, mark your time. Mark your time. Put a premium on your time. Verse 17 is saying to us, know the will of the Lord. Know the will of the Lord. Know the Lord. How do you know the will of somebody? How do you know what your friend wants, what your friend does not want? You need to know your friend. So this is saying, know God. This is how we get wisdom. Because God is the custodian of wisdom. If you spend time with him, it is not time that is wasted. It is time that is invested. Know God. In knowing God, you are going to know a whole lot of things. Let's look at Jeremiah 9. 23 and 25, no, 24. 23 and 24, Jeremiah. He says, let no, somebody that wants to boast of wisdom, a wise man, let him not boast of his wisdom. Verse 23, he says, thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory, some translations will say boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. 24. He says, but let him who glories, glory in this, that he understands and he knows me. That you know me, that you know that I am, I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth, for in this I delight. Every time that we spend knowing the Lord, you are actually spending it knowing yourself. You are spending it improving on yourself because you are fellowshipping with the Lord. You are knowing what the Lord wants for you. you. By knowing what he wants for you, he said, see, let him say that he knows me. You understand me. That should be your greatest preoccupation. You want to know the Lord. Every day, you know, time that goes by every day, you want to be, you want to be able to say at the end of the day that you have moved closer to the Lord. There is no assignment, no work that is bigger than this. We've, we've been saying it for a while. That our ultimate assignment here on earth is that we will make the Lord known to our world. That is your ultimate. You are representing your principal. Your principal is God. You are representing him. Amen. You are revealing him to the world. And how do you represent somebody that you do not know? So every time that you spend in knowing the Lord, it is not time wasted. It is time that you are investing. He says, let him glory that he knows me. Let him glory that he understands me. That I may God, I, I love exercising loving kindness. I love judgment. I love righteousness. If some of these things, if we understand God, the devil will not be able to bamboozle us. Amen. We will be more productive in life. Because some lies that he wants to sell to you, you will say, I am not available. They did not meet me at home. Why? Because you have spent your time to know the Lord. How do CBN, how does CBN rather make his staff, you know, maybe his tellers, know the correct currency, um, the, the, the genuine currency away from the fake? They don't spend time with the fake. They spend time with the genuine, the original, such that in time, they know how it smells. They know how it feels when they, tell, they, when they squeeze it. Even when it is not new notes, they will tell you that I know how this thing feels. I have fellowshiped with it. The Lord says this should be your greatest preoccupation. You are looking for wisdom. Look for the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1.30. It says to us that Jesus Christ has become unto us wisdom. But it's not only wisdom that he has become to us. This scripture in Ephesians 5.17 is saying to us, it's saying, know 
um, you know, understand, know the Lord, know what the will of the Lord is. Know what the will of the Lord is. To know what the will of the, of the Lord is, you have to know the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, still talking about um, glory, verse 29 says that no flesh should glory in his presence, that is in presence of God, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. So talking about Jesus, he said Jesus became what for us? He became wisdom from God for you and I. But it is not only wisdom. Look at the remaining. We know Jesus as righteousness. We know him as bringing us sanctification. We know Jesus as being responsible for redemption in our lives, right? But this scripture says he became for us wisdom from God. And these remaining three things. The way you have known Jesus as righteousness, as sanctification, as redemption, you need to know that Jesus is wisdom. He is wisdom. So time that we spend knowing him, you are spending it getting to be wise. Because as you fellowship with the genuine, you fellowship with wisdom, you fellowship with the true God, the holy God, you, you, you begin to um, you know, gather um, you begin to have what it takes to know wisdom, to have wisdom, because you are fellowshipping with wisdom. Amen. So fellowship with the Lord. Take time to know the Lord. We have, you, we, we have you know, several ways of fellowshipping with wisdom, fellowshipping with God. We have the word of God. You have time that you will spend in the place of prayer. All of these things, they are, they, you know, there are no other ways. To get wisdom, to know wisdom. Jesus said, get wisdom. One way to get wisdom is to be close to the Lord. Be close to God. Get to know him. In getting to know him, you are going to know things about righteousness. You are going to know things about the things that he wants for your life, the things he has done for you and I, things that he has freely given to us that we are supposed to be cruising into, laying hold of. Amen. And the lies that the enemy wants to desperately give to you, you will not be able to buy it because you know the Lord. Amen. So it takes deliberate efforts. It takes deliberate effort to say, and we've said these things again and again. It takes deliberate effort to stay with the Lord, to, to listen to him. Amen. Verse um, 17. Let me move on to 17. Ephesians 5, 17. It says, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. This is how... No, that's 17, right? We've, we've done 17. So know the Lord. Proverbs, um, Proverbs is in 9. Yes, Proverbs 9, 10. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Know the Lord. It's verse 18. I should be moving to now. Ephesians 5, 18. 5, 18 says, Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. This particular verse starts by telling us, what not to do it says don't be drunk with wine why because being drunk with wine and here I, I am very this is not limited to wine 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 is generic of course wine itself yes and i don't want to i don't want you to be tripped by is it so are they saying is what they are saying is it now that christians should not be i know some of some people have those questions i want to believe they are not here you know wine wine itself of course it has the ability to intoxicate it has the ability to to get you to indulge in it. So we're not even looking at wine as in wine alone, but everything, everything that can, that can make you become indulgent of it, that can make you take too much of it. You take, you know, excess of it. Amen. Because the truth is, the, the, my discussion this morning is not on whether it is correct for Christians to drink wine or not drink wine. But I, I need to just leave one thing with you. Now, nobody will find himself or herself in hell because they drank wine. Amen? It is not sin that is going to send people to hell. It says do not be drunk. I don't drink wine, so don't think I'm, um, I'm making excuse. Amen? But of course, when I had my, when I had my wedding... I hope some of us know this. Our janitor will tell us. They put wine as preservative, sure you know. <laughs> so, I can say, with, you know, I, it, so you have it in cake, you have it in several things. But I'm saying to you, what wine, what I'm focusing on here is anything that has a tendency to make you get indulgent in it. You get indulgent, you have excess of it. And it can be food. It can be sleep. 
It can be sleep. That word dissipation says disappearing gradually. That's the meaning of, of, of dissipation. Life will disappear gradually. Energy will disappear gradually. Time will disappear gradually. As you indulge in what you are not so, the only indulgence you can give to yourself that will not hurt you is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't have too much of God. Every other thing, whether it is any form of pleasure, food, sleep, um, whatever, once you indulge so much in it, it turns into depriving you, reducing you. Amen. It reduces you. It makes something go away from you bit by bit. He says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. So we can always also say that if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, because we can look at this verse and say, do not be drunk with wine. It is a sin. If you are drunk with wine, it is a sin. And what is another, another thing that is a sin is if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, it is a sin. Can you help me tell your neighbor? If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, it is a sin. Because it says, don't be drunk with wine. Don't become in, overindulgent in, in all of these physical pleasures. Don't be overindulgent with them. But fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit. At the PCG, I think it was two, three weeks ago. Well, okay, we should be more than two weeks now. Part of what we learned when Profola taught us is that, uh, was it Profola that thought was the last time? Yeah. At the PCG level. Part of what we learned, no, it was doctor. Doctor, yes. Part of what we learned is, as a believer, there are three experiences that a believer ought to have with the Holy Spirit. At the first, you get born again through the help of the Holy Spirit. Number two, you experience baptism with the Holy Spirit. And then number three, there is being filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're told that the first level, the second one, is something that happens once in a lifetime. But the third one is the one that's supposed to be ongoing, continual. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with him. And you will see when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, some of the things that you begin to see, that's what we'll see in verse 19 to 21. When, the, when, we are, when you are taking your time to, you know, fill yourself up again and again with the Holy Spirit, and the only way to do it, one of the ways that we know is you intentionally pray in the Spirit. Amen. Pray in the Spirit. Read the Word of God. Stay close to the Lord. As you are allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you up, you are going to see the results. The results of it you begin to see in verse 19. It says, when, this, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, when you are filled, just like a cup that is filled to the brim, you find out that it begins to spill over, right? Part of your own spilling over is what you will see from verse 19. It says you begin to speak to yourself in psalm, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. These are some of the things. See, if th some of these things are not evident in your life, this thing, the, you know, it, it just shows that I'm not filled and I need to find a way to get filled. I'm saying to you that one of the ways that you begin to acquire wisdom is that you mark what you do with your time. You need time to raise family. You need time to raise friendship. How many people have tried being in a relationship that you want to get married? It takes time. You have to commit time to that, your partner. Time to build business. Time to, you know, grow your career. You're going to read books. You are going to learn. You are going to attend courses. You are going to register for courses. What you do with your time will show eventually if you are a foolish person or you are a wise person. If you are gaining wisdom or you are, you are not gaining wisdom, it will show. Time is of the essence. Mark your time. Verse 16 says to us, the days are evil. Redeem your time. Purchase with your time. Be sure that you are getting quality for your time. The, the, as you are releasing your time, make sure you are getting something back, you know, of quality. It might be good rest that you are getting. It might be, you know, you are working so that you can have money to buy good food. Amen. Be a blessing to somebody and take care of yourself. You are spending time. But be sure that you are using your time to get something that is profitable to you. Amen. Amen. So we said mark your time, how you use your time. Stay close to the Lord. Get to know the Lord. Get to fellowship with him. Get to be a friend of the Lord. Learn his ways. Learn his ways. Do not remain a baby. Do not remain, do, do not remain on thoughts. Get closer to the Lord. Know him. We should begin to know our left from our right. We should see that we are increasing. We are getting better. What used to you know, make me falter and fall the other time is not making me falter and fall anymore. I'm becoming stronger as a Christian. Amen. Know the Lord. 
Know the Lord. It's your responsibility. Nobody will do it for you. You have to carve out time. You have to make up your mind. Know the Lord. The way you eat in the morning, afternoon, night, the, day, the way you go through your week, you need to carve out time to know the Lord. This is, this is real work for you, and it will, it will profit you. You will see it at the end of the day, whether you are a person that is increasing in wisdom or not. Know the Lord. It says, if you want to boast, boast that you know me. Boast that you know me. I may God that love justice. I love righteousness. You know the things that God has for you. You know the things he wants in our world. That is how you are going to be able to represent him well. Know the Lord. Verse 18 says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't, get, don't allow any other person have influence or control over you. Don't let any other thing, you know, control you apart from the Holy Spirit. Be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Always be in touch with the Holy Spirit. And he said, when this begins to happen, then you are going to experience joy. Experiencing joy, you find out you are speaking to you, one another, to one as, uh, uh, you know, ourselves. You are speaking to one another in Psalms in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. All of this conversation that you have in verse 19 here, what it simply means is that you will be a person that praise, praises the Lord. You will be a person that praises the Lord. Verse 20, you will see that this person is a person that is given to gratitude. It just follows. So when you find yourself that you become grumpy, if you find yourself that you are becoming, you know, um, sad, you are not joyful, you are not taking gratitude to the Lord, check yourself. You are low. You need to get back to a place of connecting with the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 20 says, you will always be giving thanks. Always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will find a reason always, like you are, you are just making every excuse to give thanks to God. You will see reason in your life. When you catch yourself, you know, it's difficult for you to say thank you to God. You are looking and you can't find what has been done. You are, you, you, it's already it's a, um, um, like a litmus test for you to say, see, I've, I've drawn away from the Lord. I'm not close to the Spirit anymore. I've, I'm allowing some other things take my time. I'm allowing some other things take my focus. Amen. When you are filled with the Spirit, thanksgiving will come. Singing of songs, praising God. You know, you are praising him for who he is. Then you, verse 20, you can thank him for what he is done or what he's doing. Amen. It makes it easier for you to see what the Lord has done, what the Lord is doing. And you can genuinely bring thanks to the Lord. This is, you, and you, the truth is, you need to have this outlook. If not, going through our life, it can be a very um, challenging, it can be challenging, it can be difficult going through life if you do not have this kind of um, perspective. If you are tuned too much to news, tuned too much to what is going on, and you don't balance it with this, you know, feeling yourself, being filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, remaining in touch with the person of the Holy Spirit, you realize that depression is easy for it to take a hold of you. It's easy for this depression to come in. It's easy for things to become bleak as if, you know, what is going on here? Sadness can easily come in. It can easily creep in. But when you are a person that is in touch, and that is wisdom for you and I. Someone said, in fact, I don't even think it's someone like that. It's, it's, it's um, you know, if we look through, you know the life expectancy of a particular gender is lesser than that of, a, of the other gender, right? You people know. And they said it's because they, they, they carry a lot on themselves. They put a lot of pressure on themselves. One way to relieve yourself of pressure is to allow your heart to turn to the Lord. Praise him for who he is. Thank him for what he's done, for what he will do. This is wisdom. The Lord Jesus said, go get wisdom. If you do not have this wisdom, tendencies or chances are you will become overwhelmed. Chances are you will be sad. You will be, you will be discouraged. You will be discouraged. Depression can come in. You have to learn how to teach yourself how to return back to this Ephesians 5. Every time you open to it, tell yourself this is how to get wisdom. In the Nigeria of today, this is how to have wisdom. I need to mark my time. 
I need to know the Lord, know what the will of the Lord is for me, know what the will of the Lord is not for me. The way to know is to stay close to him. What has he said about me? What has he said about prosperity? What has he said about marriage? What has he said about the works of our hands? What has he said about the work he's given us to do here on earth? What has the Lord said? What has the Lord said about my life, about my nation, Nigeria? Do you know what the Lord has said about Nigeria? It's part of having wisdom. If you have that wisdom, you will not be shaken. You will enjoy your days. You will not go through seven days of a week as if you have just lived two or three out of the seven days. You have not lived it fully because the remaining four or five days, you were unhappy, you were sad, you were overwhelmed. Maybe listening to the news. But if you know the Lord, if you know what the will of the Lord is, if you are conversant with what God has said about Nigeria, if you are conversant with what God has said about your life, you will find a reason to live with joy, to live expectant, to live hopeful. Amen. And 18 says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Stay close to the Holy Spirit. Sing songs. Make melody in your heart. The scripture says that a, 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 a merry heart does good like what? Like medicine. Be merry. Be merry. Have reason to, to play songs and dance. Amen? It is wisdom. Please tell somebody wisdom. It is wisdom. Take your heart off challenges, troubles. Tell yourself everything will be all right. Because if you are fellowshipping with the Lord, if you know the Lord, you will not even need your pastor to tell you that everything will be all right. Does anybody agree with me? If I need to be told every time by my pastor, by my leader, my husband, that things will be all right, that means I am not staying in touch with God. Because if your ears are closed to his own mouth, you are going to hear him say all these things to you. You are going to hear him say to you the things he has in stock for this nation, the things he has in stock for you. So you will do yourself a lot of good by staying close to the Lord so that you can live your days with wisdom, live it as a wise person. You can maximize the day. You can make the most use of the day. Amen. And lastly, verse 21 there says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Your relationships are going to be a lot smoother, better. Amen. When you are that kind of a person that recognizes the praise of God recognizes the, 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 the worship of God. You are thanking him. You are a thankful person. You are a joyful person. You are a happy person. Your relationship with other people will be, it will, it will be less stressful. It will be easier. It says submitting to one another in the fear of God. It makes it a lot easier. You have the wisdom to deal with brothers in the fold, you know, in, 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 in the church or within the kingdom of God. You also have the wisdom of God to deal with people that are outside. As you, redeem your, as you redeem the time, as you make the most use of your time, as you stay close to the Lord. Colossians 4 verse 5 says you will speak to those that are outside with wisdom. You will know how to speak with them. Colossians 4 5. It says um, to walk in wisdom towards those who are outside, redeeming the time. You will know how to speak to people that are not even Christians. The people that you have business, you are transacting business with. People that Jesus Christ has sent you and I to. He said, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Be wise. The scripture in Colossians 4, 5 here is telling us that you're going to, because you have wisdom, you will know how to even speak to people that are outside of the faith. That wisdom that you have gotten, that wisdom that you are getting, that wisdom that you are pursuing after, you are, you are, you know, you are spending your time to have more and more of it. And wisdom is not something that we get once. It's a lifetime journey. You know, I said to you that wisdom is not so much of a thing. Wisdom is a person. It's the person of the Lord Jesus. We don't get wisdom this time and say, I have wisdom now. You are going to continue, continue with it, marking your time, getting to know the Lord ensuring that you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone. Not under the influence of alcohol, not under the influence of food, of anything that can make you indulgent in it. All of those things are bad as masters. The Holy Spirit is the only one that is good as master. It is the, one, the only one that can lead our lives into good, into, into prosperity, into increase. But if we allow all of those physical pleasures, 
If we allow them, we become indulgent. We are going to be sorry for it. Enjoy them, but don't indulge. Don't indulge yourself. Don't have too much of it. Amen. It, it dissipates life. It makes it go away. It disappears from you gradually and is not putting back into you. It's not giving you quality in return. But as you allow the Spirit of God govern your life, rule your life, direct your life, control your life, you are appreciating in wisdom. Soon enough, you're going to look and people, even people will look at you and say, this person is wise. This person knows he has wisdom. Amen. And the assignment, your assignment that you have in life, you can, you can carry it out. Because the Lord Jesus already said to us, for you to be successful, for you to survive, for you to thrive, where I'm sending you to, you need to harm yourself with wisdom. We want to arrive at our destination and we want to arrive successful. Amen. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging us this morning that we, you, know, you, you look at your schedule and say, in what way am I lacking? In what way can I improve on all of these things? How can I get more wisdom into my life? Wisdom is just the same way you eat food every day because you want to have energy to run your course every day. The same way you need wisdom. You need constant flow of wisdom into your life as you fellowship with the Lord, as you, as you allow him rub off on you, you allow him shine his light upon you, amen? The word of the Lord says to us in Proverbs 4, 18, it says the path of a righteous man is a shining light. That can only happen as we become wiser and sharper. You become better and better. You have more knowledge in your arsenal such that when opportunity come, comes rather to display wisdom, you can display it. You have gathered this knowledge over time. When opportunities come knocking at your door and it's time for you to display whether you have wisdom or not, you can display it. Wisdom is important. I want us to commit ourselves as we go into the week, we go to the end of the year. I want you to be jealous over, you know, over these three things. Be jealous over it, your relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit, and especially allowing the Holy Spirit to control you. Allow him to have rule, have dominion over your life, not any other thing. Ruling, controlling, no. Holy Spirit, I want, to, I, want to, I want to master how you will direct me, how you will instruct me. You want to run everything by him. And the truth is, after a while, like we said, as you fellowship with wisdom, you fellowship with the wise, you become wise. Initially, you might need to run everything by, you know, you might need to like wait um, as we are learning to become a person of wisdom, appreciate wisdom, get more wisdom. You might need to knock on the door of God and you are praying and you are fasting to know what is on his mind. But as you become better at it, you realize that you can take decisions that are correct. Spur of the moment decisions and you are consistently correct. That is where we want to get to where you can consistently take decisions in life and we can see wisdom. We can see the progression of your life. We can see wisdom on the display consistently. Not that I do it well this time and then I fall and then I rise, I take a dip again. We want to walk and have our journey smooth. We want the, the, the time spent in correcting errors to be eradicated. Amen. We want it to be eradicated. We want to love wisdom more. Benefit of wisdom as I, as I round up. Just look with me in Proverbs 4. Look with me at Proverbs 4, rather. The whole of Proverbs 4, you know we said it earlier on, the whole of Proverbs. Proverbs 4, Proverbs 8, you, it will just bless your life. But let me, let me just give you a bit of the benefit. Verse 6 of um, chapter 4 says, Do not forsake her, talking about wisdom, and she will preserve you. Love her, she will keep you, she will keep you. So as you have wisdom, wisdom brings what? Preservation. Wisdom will preserve you. This is part of the reason why you need to love it, why you need to go get it. Verse 8 says, exalt her and she will promote you. Give these things we just discussed this morning, give them, you know, a front burner in your life. Tell yourself, I want to go after these things. I want to seek after these things. I want to mark my time better. I want to be conscious of how I am knowing the Lord, how I'm knowing God better. Am I knowing him better this week than I knew him last week? You know, oftentimes I say, some people go through their lives not even hearing the voice of God. It's, it's, it's a disaster, and it is sad. People go through life two days, three days. God has not said anything to you. You are, you, you are probably saying something to God, though. You are probably praying, but you are not pausing. God is not saying anything to you. It's a dangerous place to be. 
He says, exalt wisdom. Exalt her. Give her, you know, the front burner space in your life. Commit to it. I'm going to, I'm going to go after wisdom. I'm going to give God more time. I'm going to look, up, look at the word of God because I want to know God more. I want to listen to his voice. I want to know him. I want to know what he has said about my life, what he said about my country. What are the opportunities that are available that God is making available to me? You know, I want to just spend time. He says, as you commit to that, wisdom is going to promote you. You want promotion? Love wisdom. Love spending time with God. Amen. Love becoming a person of wisdom. He says she will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will bring you promotion. She will bring honor to you. Verse 9 says she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Maybe you are laboring, you are, you are struggling with some things. As wisdom comes, you realize that you receive more grace to do some things naturally. Amen. There are things that we are struggling with. I'm trying. I'm not getting it. You go after God. Go after knowledge. Go after knowledge. Around, the, you know, the, the, as it concerns your career, as it concerns your life, how are you gaining more knowledge? And, you know, this knowledge I'm talking about, especially that spending of your time, it doesn't have to do with Bible and praying alone. It, that covers everything about your life. You want to be more knowledgeable, you want to learn more things, you want to acquire more knowledge about your career, about relationships, about raising family, leading lives, um, you know, uh, making money, maximizing money, amen, multiplying money, managing money. All, as you get all of those knowledge, it's going to show at the end of the day. Some things will become more effortless, effortless in your life. You just realize that some things, you know, as we were small, uh, well, when I was small, rather, you know, to wash towel and then squeeze it. How many of you had problems like I did? I dreaded washing towel, especially in uh, my boarding school. Because after washing, you know, <laughs> have, you've seen people be, um, um, wash before and they are wet completely. Because the whole of the towel, I'll put it all across me like this. And I'll start squeezing <laughs> from the bottom. Squeeze more, small, small. At the end of the day, the whole of your clothes is wet. Because it was bigger than my hands. But right now, it's not the same. There are some ladles that you use in the kitchen. Even now, when I give them to Yvette, I see the way she turns the hand as in this thing. But with time, as she grows, amen. So there are some things that just give it more time. Spend time with the Lord. Acquire more wisdom, amen. Rob, you know, rub minds with the Lord. Fellowship with him. Allow him rub off on you. Allow him shine his light upon you. Some things will become easier with time. It won't, it won't just suddenly happen that you know how to take correct decisions. And all of these things are pretty much important. I'm saying to you that the benefit of going after knowing the Lord, having wisdom, because like I said, Jesus is wisdom personified. As you are saying you want to know more wisdom, you are getting to know him. Know his plans, his purposes for your life. Things become easier. Some people, it was easy for them to just decide for their life partners. They didn't need to pray, pray and fast and fast and fast. They prayed, but it wasn't so difficult like that. Because they've learned over time how to hear the voice of wisdom. That would say, this is the way to go walk therein. It is not in the day of battle that you begin to prepare for these things. Prepare now. Know the Lord. The benefits are huge. We have said she will bring you promotion. She will bring you preservation. She will give you grace to do some things more effortlessly. Verse 10 says, hear my son and receive my sayings. And the years of your life will be long. It will be many. You will have lo longevity of life also. Because wisdom, the, the scripture says to us that there is this, wisdom is a defense. Money also is a defense. You can look that up when you finish. Wisdom is defense. Money is defense. But it says there is the superiority of wisdom over money. What money cannot do, wisdom can do. Wisdom can preserve your life. Amen. So please get wisdom in all that you do. Verse 12 says when you walk, your steps will not be hindered. It will make your journey smooth. It will not elongate your journey. Amen. 
It will not add sorrow to your journey. It will, it will, it will um, you know, save you from some heartaches, some troubles. So I want you to make a commitment to the Lord this morning. Make a commitment. You are looking at that verse 16. You are looking at verse 17. You are looking at verse 18. And you are saying, Lord, I'm going to commit to all of these things. Help me this week in the name of Jesus. I want you to talk to the Lord this morning. This is how our lives become better. A little here, a little there. You know, this is how it becomes better as you decide one decision after another. As we make all these decisions in life, you, our lives become, it becomes more wholesome. It becomes better. Our life can give, it can, you know, give you more joy. You can have more peace. As you just take a little decision today, that what I'm getting out of the message today is I'm going to start doing this. It might not be the whole of 16, 17, 18 you want to start doing immediately, but I want you to commit to something and ask that the Lord will grant you grace. Which one do you need the most out of the, out of the three verses? You know, which one has, you, know, you want to give urgent attention to right now? I want you to pray and say, God, help me. As we go into this week, help me to commit to this. Help me to commit to transacting with my time. Let me know that you know, time is a commodity that I can't afford to squander. squander. I, want to, I want to make the most use of it. I want to use it to purchase you know, something of quality to my Myself. I, want, I want to invest it in the name of Jesus. It might be that you want to know the Lord. What has the Lord said about he my health? What has he said about my finances? What has the Lord said about businesses? What has the Lord said about family, about marriage? You want to know because all of this knowledge will, will be important to you much later. As you gather the knowledge now, when the opportunity comes for display of, of wisdom, you will not be found wanting. You might want to say, I want the Holy Spirit to direct my life more. You know, I'm a Christian, but then I really don't listen to the Holy Spirit. I don't really give him attention like that. I just do my own thing. I wake up in the morning, I already know what to do. I'm not committing my ways into the hands of the Lord. During the, during the day, self, I'm not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Once I leave in the morning, it is when I come in the night, I'm saying, you know, thank you, Lord. But you want to change that. You want to say, God, help me to walk better with the person of the Holy Spirit. I want to sing songs. I want to sing. I want to praise the Lord. I want to be a person that, you know, that, that gives, I, I give thanks. I want to be more grateful. I want to be more grateful. If you are more grateful, you will realize at the end of the day, it's going to affect your relationship with people. You, you are for training yourself to see what God is doing. Every time you decide, I'm going to be a grateful person. I'm going to be a person that gives thanks. You are training yourself to see what God has done. And as you focus on it, you are going to see more. We know that whatever it is that we focus on, you make room for more of it. As you focus on thanksgiving, you focus on the things that God has done, you are going to make room for more. You are going to see more and more and more. I want you to pray that the Lord will help you this week. You want to add something to your life. Oftentimes, you don't need a very drastic change. You just need a little change. Add something. Add something. Make up your mind and say, I'm going to start doing this. And as you stay committed to it, in no longer time, you begin to see the benefits. You will see the profit. You will see the promotions coming, the life preservation coming. You will see joy coming. Amen. Father, we bless your name for the opportunity this morning. We thank you, our Father. Thank you because we are not alone in this journey of our lives. Thank you because you are with us. Thank you because you have said to us that when we lack wisdom, if anybody lacks, we should come to you. We come to you this morning and we're asking that you will help us. All of the points that we have looked at this morning, we pray that you help us to imbibe them in our lives in the name of Jesus. Help us to get wisdom. Help us to increase in wisdom. Your word says a wise man we, he will hear and he will increase. Father, help us to increase as we open up our hearts to more of you. More wisdom in our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that our profiting will appear even as we go into this week in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for as many as need to make urgent changes. Lord, I receive grace in the name of Jesus. That we will not go back to living our lives the way we used to for as many as their lives need to be, to be adjusted right about now. Lord, I receive grace for everyone to imbibe all that you have taught us this morning and begin to implement, begin 